Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's talk about the first isomorphism theorem today. Before that, let me uh, tell you what isomorphisms are. We've talked about homomorphisms so far. Uh, so what's an isomorphism of R modules? So suppose I have two R modules M and N. R is some fixed ring. They're both say left modules over a given ring. A map F from M to N is said to be an isomorphism if it is well firstly it needs to be a homomorphism so let's me let me phrase it like this a homomorphism f from m to n is said to be an isomorphism if it admits an inverse okay so which means there is a map g in the opposite direction uh, if there exists g uh, such that G is a homomorphism also. And F and G are mutual inverses of each other, which means F composition G is the identity map on N and G composition F is the identity map on M. Okay. Now, here is a, a little proposition which makes it easy to check that a given map is an isomorphism uh, you don't really need to to you know look for a homomorphism g in the opposite direction and so on uh, if f is a bijection okay so uh, proposition is the following uh, uh, f from m to n is an isomorphism is the same as saying if and only if f is a bijective homomorphism okay and bijective just means it's a one to one on two map of sets so from m to n it should it should be a bijection and it should be a homomorphism okay now if you have these two properties then uh, that's enough to to find a map g um, so I'm going to leave the checking as an exercise. Uh, why? You know, because recall if I have a bijection between these two, uh, between any two sets, then I have something called an inverse set map. At the moment, there's only a map of sets, if you wish, okay, which goes in the opposite direction. But it's very easy to check that because f is a homomorphism, the inverse map will also get the same properties. It will also acquire the same properties. Uh, of a homomorphism okay so you can check that easily so here's a little exercise uh, isomorphism is nothing but a bijective map of sets which is also a homomorphism okay now uh, let's also introduce two more words we sometimes talk about endomorphisms okay so what's an endomorphism an endomorphism is a map uh, is a homomorphism between the same spaces. So, if I have a homomorphism from a module M to itself, then we usually say this is an endomorphism of M. Okay. So, endo just means uh, inside or within. So, it just maps M back to itself. So, such a map, a homomorphism from M to M is called an endomorphism of M. And similarly, uh, an isomorphism from M to M is called an automorphism of M. Okay, so if F from M to M turns out to be an isomorphism, then we usually call this an automorphism. Okay, so these are just two more words which are used as shorthands to say that both M and N are actually the same module M in those cases. Okay. So, we now know homomorphisms, isomorphisms, endomorphisms, automorphisms. Now, let us look at some examples of isomorphisms. So, if I take my ring to be the ring of integers, then 
uh, modules are nothing but abelian groups so let's take here the abelian groups z and 2z so 2z just means the set of all even integers this is a, a sub module of m okay uh, but observe that even though n is a sub module of m m and n are actually isomorphic to each other okay here's an isomorphism so consider the map n going to 2n this is an isomorphism of of z modules because well notice that well firstly it's a bijection because every i mean it's clearly a one to one map it's on to because all even numbers occur here and it's a homomorphism of z modules because recall we said before a homomorphism of z modules is nothing but a homomorphism of abelian groups and this is of course a homomorphism of the underlying abelian groups z and 2z so this is an isomorphism in fact this is not the only one you can also construct another isomorphism between these two modules which is z uh, n going to minus 2n okay that's also an isomorphism so in fact when two uh, modules are isomorphic it's not always that there is a unique isomorphism between them there are often many different isomorphisms uh, between two, between two isomorphic modules even okay so that's the notion of isomorphism now two more important notions which again are things which you, you have seen already in the case of groups and rings and so on is the notion of a kernel and an image of a homomorphism so suppose i have f from m to n okay suppose this is a homomorphism of r modules so let's say both m and n are modules over a fixed ring r then we talk about the kernel so this is the definition the kernel of this map is all elements which map to zero the image of this map is of course just the image in the sense just f of x as x ranges over m so clearly this is a sub of n this is a sub of m subset of m and n and uh, here's the immediate proposition the kernel is a sub module of m and the image is a sub module of okay so let me prove this well i'll prove one of them the other is is easy um, in fact both are easy so let's check that the kernel is a sub module for example okay so let's check the first guy the kernel so what do we need to check well i need to check two things to check that it's a sub module first i need to check closure under addition so if i take two elements x and y in the kernel i need to check whether x plus y is in the kernel too Okay, and how do I check whether their sum is in the kernel? Well, I'll act f on it and see if it gives me zero. Okay, but in this case, f of x plus y is because f is a homomorphism. This is f x plus f y, so that is zero. So what does that tell me? It tells me that x plus y is also in the kernel of f. Okay, similarly, if I take x and I multiply it by a ring element r, I want to know whether r x is in the kernel. But again, f of r x is just I can pull the r out. So and write it as r times f of x. Okay, but now this is just nothing but r times uh, x was in the kernel, so this is r times zero, and we have sort of proved this once before that r times zero must actually be zero. Okay, how do you do it? You write zero as zero plus zero, you expand out, and so on. So r times zero will be the same as r times zero plus r times zero, and so on. Right? So you 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 we have seen this argument once before. so what is that uh, lead us to we have shown that f of rx is actually a zero too okay so which means that we conclude not only is the sum in the kernel the scalar multiplication of an element of the kernel by a ring element is also in the kernel okay and these two properties are exactly what it means for the kernel to be a sub module so the conclusion is that the kernel of f is in fact a sub module 
okay and i leave the other one for, for you as an exercise show that the image is also a sub module okay now uh, here's the other important fact about kernels and images again something that just comes from groups uh, the map f is injective which means it's one to one so let me say what f is f is a map from m to n uh, homomorphism of r modules let f be this then f is injective which means it's a one to one map if and only if the kernel of f is zero okay by this i mean the zero sub module similarly f is surjective which means it's on to it's an on to map so injective is the same as saying it's a one to one map surjective just says it's an on to map this is if and only if the image is the whole space n okay and again i'm going to leave this as an exercise just from follows just from the definitions more or less okay so uh, and again you've seen this in in the context of groups already fine so now coming to the uh, to the main theorem it's called the first isomorphism theorem again this is like the first isomorphism theorems you've already seen in the cases of groups and rings and so on so let me um, give you the statement of the theorem so this is usually called the first isomorphism theorem for modules so this is for modules now so what does this say it says that if i have let f be a homomorphism m to n be a r homomorphism then it says that m modulo the kernel of f that's the quotient module m mod the kernel is isomorphic so this is a symbol for isomorphism it's isomorphic to the uh, module image of f okay remember image of f is a sub module of n it's a module in its own right m by the kernel it's a quotient module the claim is that these two are isomorphic as r modules so the m modulo the kernel is isomorphic to the image so that's uh, as in all the earlier cases that's the statement of the first isomorphism theorem and in fact the proof is very quick here because we have remember we already have a first isomorphism theorem for groups okay so proof recall so let's do the following let's forget the fact that m and n are uh, modules for the moment think of them only as groups they have an underlying additive group structure so think of m and n as additive groups and recall that a uh, uh, module homomorphism is in particular a group homomorphism right the first axiom just says that f of x plus y is fx plus fy so i can think of this map f firstly as being a group homomorphism between the underlying abelian groups and now for groups i already have the the first isomorphism theorem so remember the notion of kernel here is exactly how we define the kernel in the case of groups right it's everything which maps to the identity but the identity is exactly zero in this case okay so the kernel is exactly the kernel in the sense of groups and therefore by the fundamental theorem of group homomorphisms or the first isomorphism theorem if you wish um, first isomorphism theorem for groups sometimes also called the fundamental theorem of group homomorphisms so look back on on those lectures where this was derived by this we conclude we know the following that we can define a map from the group m modulo the kernel of f to the group image of f okay, these are both now the, just the additive groups uh, there is a map between them so maybe i'll call it something let's call it 
phi what is this map which is it sends uh, m plus kernel of f the cosette to just the value f of m okay so we know that this is an isomorphism of groups okay so everything is only now for groups the underlying additive groups okay now what we want to show is that that very same map the claim is that this map phi is in fact it's more than just a group homomorphism or a, a group isomorphism it turns out also to be an r module isomorphism okay so what does that require us to do uh, in addition to the group structure here what we have in m modulo the kernel is a scalar multiplication by elements of r the same thing on the right side so we just have to now show that phi also respects the scalar multiplication if we do that then automatically phi becomes a r module homomorphism it's already a bijective map because it's an iso we know it's an isomorphism of groups we have already done that work so we don't need to redo it so we only remains because we are appealing to the work that we have already done in proving this theorem for groups it only remains to show one simple thing here that phi respects the ring the scalar multiplication so i need to check that when i apply phi to r times a cosset i need to check whether this gives me the same answer as r acting on phi of this okay if i check this it means that i can pull out the ring elements r so i have to check this for all ring elements r for all elements m of m okay so let's just use the definition of phi and check what the left hand right hand sides will be so observe that the left hand side is r acting on m plus kernel of f so let me compute that so the left hand side is just r acting on this is by definition i just have to act r on the representative and phi of rm by definition is f acting on rm let's go up here and check f of m was the definition of the map phi so here it is just f acting on the representative rm so similarly the right hand side was r acting on phi of this cosset but in this case this is nothing but r acting on fn by definition okay now observe that r acting on fm and f of rm are actually equal to each other because f is in fact f is a homomorphism of r modules okay so observe we started out this proof by so okay let's first say we are done now so therefore done proved okay so that completes the proof of the first isomorphism theorem so observe the way we have proved this the strategy here has been to first show that um uh, to to first ignore the fact that m and n are r modules think of them only as abelian groups only think of f as a abelian group homomorphism and then do everything appeal to the group theory uh, statement for the first isomorphism theorem but then finally after we 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 have shown it's a, it's an isomorphism at the level of groups we go back and now see whether we can also incorporate this additional scalar multiplication into the the picture to do that what we finally end up needing is this additional uh, statement about f that f was not just a group homomorphism it's also a r module homomorphism okay so this is a very important statement uh, the first isomorphism theorem as always is uh, it tells you that the images of homomorphisms can be identified with a certain natural quotient sub quotient modules okay